some responses to questions asked on the Great Work website. I applaud the um, creation of such forums and the growth of a community based around the um, concept of trying to improve our craniofacial form and our health with it and of course alignment of teeth as well. It's potentially huge science and you are actually witnessing the development of something. It, it seems crazy to believe that it's occurring and yet it is. Now I thought I'd bring up these questions and see if we can gently go through a few of them just with me explaining them. So the first question for it is Irma Firma says, Mike, um, have you had success treating patients who have been messed up by previous dental work? Then you go on to say, you've got two extractions. Um, and I've been unable to expand my mouth since it's, you, you, since, yeah, I'm not totally convinced with your suggesting you won't be able to, you know, you, your body doesn't want to produce gaps. Um, and then you're going on to say, you know, you're going to have this, um, the space is opened up. Now, I, I want to cut against slightly this, um, the, the, the concept you bring up. Now, I work with a lot of patients to try and reverse previous orthodontic work. I'm less interested in it now, mainly because I, it could take a lot of my time up working with these patients who have had previous orthodontic work. Yes, I could really help them, but what's going to help us all the most is if I can get the maximum change in the facial structure of children under 30, people under 30, particularly the kids where I'm getting better and better, then the teenagers where, well, previously we struggled and we're getting now really good results for teenagers. And of course that 20 to 30 year age group, group that's what I'm focusing on. And I, it has to be a, a very, very blinded focus to achieve good results. Uh, there's lots of people who've had problems with orthodontics. I'd rather not touch them. I don't really want to be treating patients who've had missing teeth at the moment. Now, the concern that I've got that you're all thinking about is, if you imagine faces have dropped down, that probably happened naturally. You ended up with too little cross-sectional space, so two teeth were taken out. Canines, <laughs> okay, yeah, I wouldn't wholeheartedly have agreed with taking canines out, but clearly it's been done. Now, your dental form and tongue space is down here somewhere and you want to expand it and move it forward to fit two teeth here. Well, realistically, you want to move the whole thing up here. And as you're moving them up, well, why do you want to open spaces? Just move everything up and forwards. Because if you're going to open spaces, by definition, something's going to go backwards. So I, I'm, not, I'm not really buying into this opening up extraction spaces again. And of course, the beauty is if you do this all with your tongue, you're not going to open any spaces up. I, I see the upper and dental arch a bit like two sets of ivory, you know, and I set of ivory dominoes for the lower dental arch and a set of ivory dominoes in the upper dental arch. You've got the tongue in the middle and you've got the lips on the outside. Well, if you hold the lips closed and you blow up the tongue like a big balloon, all the teeth are going to stand up straight. I'm not concerned if the domino number six is missing and domino number seven has moved forward to take its place, as long as it's moved forwards. The problem usually when you extract teeth is things tend to come backwards, primarily because you've got the big teeth at the back and if I'm going to do a tug of war, I, I want the big teeth on my side and <laughs> little teeth can be on the other side. But I'm not into creating space down here I want to move everything up and forwards and I want to move all the teeth forward. I don't want to move something backwards to create space. I, you know, yes, you're missing some teeth, but there's no reason to open space up. You're doing this with your tongue won't open space up. If you do this with your tongue, you'll have no space open up. Yes, it's very difficult to do with your tongue and if you're below that threshold where you feel you can change, you might struggle. 
I don't have all the answers. You know, we're, we're working there, we're getting there. Um, you're saying 100% I will eat implants. I don't know. I don't agree with that. I move everything up and forward. Do it yourself. Get everything up and forward. It's a lifetime challenge. Um, you might need some help. I, I don't know. We're, we're working. We're working. Then we've got um, problem 322. Put a question in here saying, 21-year-old female live on the west coast of the United States. Undergone regular orthodontic treatment and my face is still very asymmetrical. Still, theoretically possible to completely correct this asymmetry at my age using the BioBlock system. I have not had any extractions. Um, Alina, Alina, I, I'm going to stay clear of asymmetries at the moment. One day, I'm going to take a couple of skulls, a pile of books, some videos, and I'm going to isolate myself in a little cottage in the Outer Hebrides, and I'm going to really get my head around symmetry asymmetries and the, or how all of these bones fit together but it's an incredibly complex thing it, it is not an easy one and I, I think you, people are misunderstanding I've got some I've got some ideas that I think are clearly true I clearly have a very good understanding of a whole concept people haven't thought about but I haven't got all the ideas and you all you, 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 you're looking at this like you want me to fix you I mean, it's not about me fixing you, it's about you fixing you, possibly with me helping. I'm, you know, no more than a glorified coach. Like you coming to me and saying, um, oh, you know, I want to get into Manchester Football Club, Manchester United Football Club. Oh, if I take your um, football coach or your football programme, is that guaranteeing it? I can't, I can't guarantee that. But, you know, if I was running a football club, I, I doubt I would ever get anyone into Manchester United. Yes, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do. It, these are things are not easy. And there's no way of making it right. Yes, and asymmetries are complex, and I, I will endeavour in time to learn more about asymmetries. I, I know I can, but I'm sticking at the moment with symmetric people, and then we'll move forward. I mean, comes, you know, I've taken on a dentist working with me, what, four or five months ago four months ago probably, she's getting better, you know, she can do quite a lot of the bits that lets me come and do a little bit more of this other stuff, but you know, it, it takes time, really, time to break these moulds. Um, um, going on down to Dadfa, um, asking, um, is there such thing as wisdom teeth implants? Um, I don't know, ask somebody who does implants really, and it's not my area. Yeah. Um, Amber 12, um, in your case experience, what are the first things to begin changing? Do people's faces move towards more symmetry first before they begin to move up and forwards? I'm much more symmetrical now, but I'm still waiting for my mid face to come up or to come up, I presume. What I notice when I'm, I've become very good at looking at faces and noticing the very early signs of an upswing. So what I'll tend to see it, I tend to see it around here on the facial form, um, possibly a little bit down here. Um, you might see an improvement in lip form. Um, as I said, you need to be taking good photographs. Take a, um, get a friend or someone who's got a decent camera to stand some distance away and take good profile photographs, standing in repose, as we call it, you know, from the side. So to get someone to take a photograph, clearly not with an iPhone, because um, you want someone to take a distance as far away as possible and zoom in and take photographs like this. And then don't compare the photographs against yourself, compare the photograph from before with the photograph now, so you've got like for like. Trying to compare an image on a phone or a screen against a real image is very difficult to compare. Um, but however, going back to your question, I would imagine that the facial upswing occurs before a symmetrical correction. That's most likely. But again, you know, asymmetries, it, it, it's, this is complex and I want to keep myself less complex by avoiding asymmetries at this moment in time. Okay, so now we have Cassius. Thank you, Dr. Mew, for a great job. Thank you very much. It is nice to hear this back. Do you think there is any 
correlation between malocclusion and depression? Yes, personally I do. Do I have any evidence for that? Um, probably not. Um, but I've had, I had a very nice chat recently and he described himself as a high functioning manic depressive. And he was really nice. And you know, I, I can't remember exactly what situation was or how we could help him, but I just saw him as someone who has been affected. If, if your face drops down and back, I think it is gonna affect, it affects how everyone talks to you, how everyone treats you. It's, it's you, because there's, there's a whole area waiting to be explored here. The moment we think the way your face is, is just it, this genetic. No one's really looking at how your face and your psychology interact. But I think I can tell someone's personality by looking at their face. And if there's a large environmental influence on facial form, then maybe I can tell someone's personality from their face. Now, if you've had an effect, a negative effect from some other system, like a badly planned orthodontics, that may then affect how people think you look. Uh, well, let's not go there. I mean, clearly there, there, there is a, a lot of potential thought here. Um, and I'm probably not qualified and best place to give good advice on this area. Um, how seriously sleep apnea is damaging people's brain? Uh, well, I think a lot. I, at a conference in the States a while ago, I say, stated or suggested that people in North America, although I could say the same thing about Western Europe, who are over 60 years old, so I said, hang around, 10% of people in North America who are 60 years old are liable to die 10 years early due to sleep apnea and its consequences. All right? Now, that's not just brain effect, that's effect on your whole body. Now, I think sleep apnea is caused by craniofacial dystrophy and your tongue literally being down close to your airway. That, I think that's the cause. Now, there are other things as well. I mean, if you're more obese, that doesn't help. But clearly, it's the face dropping down that's the underlying real cause. And of course, you can ask whether obese people become sleep apneic or do people who are sleep apneic become obese? Both questions. Both could be valid points. We know that people who are getting sleep apnea will often binge eat and binge eat on precisely the type food types to make them obese. Um, and there was this study, and I'm sorry I can't remember these studies all the time, but they did a study in the States where they took a population group, they tested them for sleep apnea, they did an IQ test on them, they then offered them all to be fair and ethical they offered them all treatment for sleep apnea. I don't know what treatment, but some of them accepted, some of them didn't, which gave them a control group. They, the people, they then redid the uh, IQ test some time later. And they had, I can't remember the numbers, but what I know is it was off the scale. The improvement in IQ over that period of time was it was, it was, you could never get that from any sort of um, training, any type of medication, no, nothing. It was just impossible. They often say that if sleep could be a medicine, now clearly sleeping pills don't get good sleep, but if proper, real sleep could be packaged up and sold to people, it would be the greatest medicine there is. It would be unbelievable. And I think that's what you're seeing, is that this magical medicine of sleep was given to these people and they had a very significant increase in IQ over a relatively short space of time. Now, I think that comes to your question of does it damaging people's brain? I, I, I believe it is. Now, clearly, um, <laughs> I apparently want to be careful about what I say on the internet these days. Um, uh, how about feet and sleep? position to grow a healthy face. Walking barefoot and sleeping on the back could be the best therapy. 
I think it's more than barefoot. I think it's a little bit more complex. I've actually got a video on the line. I call it the abs walk. Keep an eye out for the abs walk. I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail. And I think that you're coming in from some interesting tangents, but I, I, it's something that I need to piece together as a cohesive theory, and I'll present that. And to wait for that video, I will come back. Um, okay, so on to um, Abdul. What's the difference between a hybrid appliance and a bioblock appliance? Um, well, I, I, I'm not trying to. I'm not selling bioblock here. I, I am very keen not to be selling it. Yet. So, as I say frequently, it's a terrible system. It's just better than the alternatives I know, in my opinion. Um, what is the difference? One's got a screw on the top. So uh, the, uh, the training appliance, uh, the preparatory appliances in bioblock orthotropics have screws to gain the increase in tongue space. So the preparation, the structural change, or the initial structural change. Um, and the training appliance doesn't have a screw on the top. So the hybrid appliance has a little bit of both. That's why it's a hybrid appliance. Um, Okay, so what are the difference between the various bioblock appliances? Just today in a meeting, we, we need to change these names. It's nonsense. My father came out with these names years ago. I'm going to change them to preparatory appliances to gain the change in structure. Because if you're going to change in structure, you can gain a change in function and, of course, with this posture. Because form and function go together. Then we have the training appliances. So once you've gained the change in structure, then in theory you could change your function and posture. So then we train you to gain that change in function and posture. And of course you'll probably then continue to gain incremental grains in structure as well. But it's this changing form and function and then training people to make the best of that change in form and function. Um, uh, what's the difference between the ALF system used to expand the arch versus against using braces such as the Damon system? Well, cost in theory very little difference. But from what I've seen as an individual, I see uh, the ALF seem to work much better at gaining width. I, I, I don't really like gaining increase in width. And of course, we're just talking width like this. I would love to get sagittal increase. And that's why I think, that's why I like the appliances I use, because we can also push the teeth forwards and get expansion in this direction, as well as expansion in this direction. Any old fool can get expansion in this direction. It's really not very difficult, yeah? To get good expansion in this direction, well, yeah. Well, the best way to get expansion in this way is to really use your, your teeth. teeth that are used upright themselves. So everyone says, oh, you can only tip the teeth. Well, if you're chewing heavily, no, you're upright. I've got cases where just using these removable appliances I do, I've moved the teeth 12, 14 millimeters wide and they've stayed bolt upright. They've stayed bolt upright because these kids are chewing heavily on the chewies I give them. So you get expansion. Of course, you know, we, 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 these questions from orthodontists and dentists and everyone, what happens when you use this appliance? What happens when you use this appliance? Well, it's a little bit like we're sitting there discussing um, how well kids are learning. And you're saying, oh, well, how are kids working with this book? And how are they learning with that book? And, well, how is about how hard they're working? How many hours they're putting in? How motivated they are? Those are the real questions you want to ask, not the book they're reading. Just get, you get out of your heads that this is the perfect appliance. People are thinking that we're going to fix them. There's, there's two big problems facing modern medicine. The first big problem facing modern medicine is that people are getting old. It, it's going to cost a fortune. And modern medicine will not cope with people getting old. It's impossible. Exponential growth in costs. The second problem with modern medicine is people not taking personal responsibility for their health care. And this is it. You're not taking you. You want someone to fix you. I'm not here to fix you. I'm here to help you fix yourself. Um, uh, so, so the difference between the appliances, um, oh, sorry, the, the ALF system and Damon system. What I don't like about fixed braces is because fixed braces hold the individual teeth in precise ways. And there's no way, however fantastic, 
fantastic you are at placing brackets, you're going to get them perfectly placed. But consequently, you're going to have a couple of teeth somewhere in the mouth that bite a little bit early. And if you've got top and bottom fixed braces on, there's no way one top or bottom arch can move a little bit to compensate for these minor inaccuracies. Consequently, all the time you've got your fixed appliances on, whenever you bite together, it's not going to be quite right. It's not quite right. And of course, if it's not quite right, your body will not allow you to engage your whole musculature because it's not quite right. Now, alpha appliances, they don't hold the teeth as, as tightly. And because they don't hold the teeth as tightly, your teeth can move a little bit and adjust. So that if you get a bit more expansion on the top or you get a bit more expansion on the bottom, the teeth move in their slight orientation or you aren't chewing well or you are chewing well, the teeth are able to move around a little bit, compensate for that, rebalance themselves and the body will say, oh, we've got a good balanced system, I can put some force through this. Well, if you've got fixed appliances on, this is my worry, that fixed appliances are going to not meet right, that won't allow you to bite properly. When patients come in to see me, I will always feel I'll put my fingers here on their masseter muscles and get them to bite as hard as they can. Right? Get them to do it a couple of times. If they've ever got fixed appliances on, the, 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 the um, masenteric volumetric change that I feel is, is minute whenever they've got fixed braces on. It's just tiny. Because they won't allow their muscles to engage. Ooh, they're a meat properly. Yeah, thank you for saying so. It is. Yeah, I have a very busy life. Fitting this in is not that easy. I'm supposed to be back by now. Um, regarding... Ah, sorry. I'm not going to look at specific people's practice and comment on them. I'm just going to resist from that because it, it could be too... It could be a minefield. And I, I have a feeling um, this doctor is doing the right things. But I don't want to make up a comment. Sorry, I, I really don't because... Particularly not publicly, because it, it, it just, you know, where would we go? Because this next person will be someone who I really don't agree with what they do, and then what do I say? So, uh, anything I can take from that, I mean... Uh, okay, do, shall I be uh, mutually beneficial? Yes, I have heard of them, and I'm, please, I'm, I'm very familiar with orofacial and myofuncal therapy. And, yes, I agree, it is very helpful. Um, I, I, I want to do better. I, I'm just never happy with these things. And I worry about people, you come up with a name like or, um, orofacial myofunctional therapy, it becomes something. And I'm a, I, I hash things up. I mash things, I think is the um, best, best word. I mean, people must hate me. I, I take their ideas, I twist them up, crash them out, do this, do that, see if I can find it better and mold it. And then, you know, <laughs> Six months down the line, I'll change it. But I, I believe I'm getting the best facial results, and I think that's what counts. And I'm, I don't see many other people getting these results. I'm not going to comment on um, uh, Dr. Franklin, I, but I do know Dr. Franklin. Um, okay, um, Mewing works. Hi, Dr. Mew. I've been fixing my posture in this and other ways for about a year and a half and I can personally I can vouch personally for the results in 20 year olds when is mewing going mainstream what are the health issues and should be covered by insurance should it be covered insurance well when is it going to go mainstream I wonder if it would ever go mainstream you know it's like asking when is fitness going to go mainstream it's, it's always going to stick at that sort of 20 to 30 percent of the population who do any fitness. It's probably less than that actually. That percentage of the population will do fitness and the rest won't. I don't think there'll be any difference. I think that if you could focus on getting kids to change that would be another thing. And of course as I was thinking recently that you know society a hundred years or so ago realized that if we were going to move forwards we needed to start educating everyone educating the kids because that was the way forwards. I mean if you go back a couple of hundred years you've got you know important uh, beasts in politics saying oh I won't give my kids education. It's nonsense. 
I want them to learn through hunting and socialising and these things, books and nonsense, it won't fill, fill your children's brains up with this, you know, and when you realise that these are the, 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 uh, the thought leaders are actually thinking this way and how far we've changed, clearly we've realised the benefits of education and society. And it's helped us enormously. I mean, you know, I couldn't have all of this stuff. I couldn't be talking to you without the products of that education as a society. Now, maybe one of the next things we focus on is per personal health improvement. And I'd like to see that because if we spend as much time focusing on personal health improvement as we do on education, I think we'd be better. We'd live longer. We'd be healthier. But. Uh, whether I'm alive to see that, I don't know. I would like to be. Um, uh, what are the other health issues? Well, multiple, I think. I, 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 if you go to the section on um, Facebook where we've got, um, sorry, not Facebook, YouTube, where we've got um, the... Um, the uh, these different videos, the, 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 the um, playlists. If you go to the playlists and you go across to these two playlists here, that really is me thinking ahead into the future. I'm trying to think way ahead of what other possibilities and draw things in, and that is a good idea of what I think the possible health implications are. I. When I talk to other people and what other people are telling me, it scares me a little bit. I mean, I, when I came out with craniofacial dystrophy, I was thinking maybe sleep apnea. Yeah. Now other things are coming in and I think they're big health issues. Now, you then ask me whether this should be covered by insurance. Uh, I'm from the UK, we've got national health. I, I have no idea what you're talking about insurance. I, I, I have no concept what, how insurance works, who covers it, Dada, sorry, you'd have to speak to someone from the States, I'm presuming. Um, now, this is Tagangstai, warning it's long. I did uh, preview this a little bit, and I don't know if I'm going to follow you all the way through here, because what I see from people who are... I, 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 I don't agree with a lot of the mainstream scientific thinking in orthodontics, but... I have to respect many of the things they do. And one of the things they don't do is they don't get led by a couple of articles. When people, as, as uh, the gangster you've, you've got here, you, you, you've got a couple of articles here. So I um, have sort of looked in um, all of these articles and you've, um, yeah, you've got, you know, they're, 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 there's some you know, journals and the protraction of monkeys, and then you've looked at it, there's a case report here, um, and there's bone remodeling after growth. It, you, you, you it's, to, science is much more about bringing up this, this big weight of evidence, and I know there's very little evidence on this, and I know that's probably, you've searched most of the articles in existence. It's, we, we, we just don't know so much on these areas. You, you need big studies. You need really lots of research done. It's very difficult, different to so you doing this where you're island hopping, where you take one little bit of research and another little bit of research and you try and build it together to make a cohesive argument. But unfortunately, if, you, if you're off by a couple, you know, each article is slightly wrong. It, it, with this level of uh, articles and this, these level of cases done, the risk is very high that you come to the wrong conclusion. So I just generally steer clear from taking a few little articles, unless they're really good crunchy articles, unless they're mind-blowingly interesting in what they're saying, that they stand as a sort of pillar that I try and avoid 
taking too many articles, but, but you, you go on to raise some interesting questions. Um, so you're saying that there, there can be no growth in uh, uh, maxillary adults, in the maxilla in adults. So you're talking about remodeling can occur in these suture sites. Um, it's plausible. Well, it is. You, um, if you watch someone with a stroke, you see how the face drops down. It affects the mandible more than the maxilla. The maxilla, probably the teeth move in a little bit, but I don't think they drop down so much. Cut someone's nerves and damn, the, the face changes. It, it's, a mark. It, it's, it's shocking how the face changes. I wish I had some good examples of that that I could show you. But when the, if you cut all the facial nerves, you can see some people in horrific, horrific roadside accidents, the, the face changes just massively and predictably and um, in, a, in a very clear and obvious way. Um, so you're saying, yeah, using, um, so you're going into saying, you're going into some details of, you know, how we could do this treatment. Well, you know, clearly that's, this is the sort of thing what I'm trying to do at the moment. And, you know, thank you for giving some suggestions. The problem with theorizing and actually trying to do things is that, First, it's mainly practicalities and what you can get individuals to do. And then once you do that, you've got to think, okay, I've got two people doing that, now I'm going to change, what am I going to do? It, it, it's, 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 the science usually, or the scientific process usually confirms what you've found out by trial and error. And moving forward is, to some degree trial and error. What I make certain, as you'll see some of the videos I'm doing, I'm really discussing with the individuals doing this what the possibilities are. That's why I can only take a few adults. That's why I'm losing money hand over fist doing this. It's, you know, I, I've, I've got to, to find ways. I want to find ways. I mean, I, this is such interesting work that I'm involved in. I have a passion for it. But I'm not making people better. But it, it, it's, you know, I, I thank you for coming up with your suggestions. You mean know, all of these suggestions, and I didn't take time to, to read through your suggestions. Um, and you go on to talk about uh, human growth hormone, and I can, clearly, you know, I'm not. I don't really approve of these messing with people's um, hormone systems. I, I, I worry about it. I worry about all this thing. And I know lots of people are saying oh, we've got to use um, stem cells now and lots of these other things and yeah okay it's got to be controlled and we the only this type of thing is going to happen when we get the spotlight the, the whole focus of modern science and all of the energies of the thousands of orthodontic researchers and that funding focused on these subjects that's how things are going to change the expectation that I'm going to come up with all of this, I mean, me, from my staff of, what, five here, um, it, it, we're not going to, I'm going to come up with some ideas, well, I can, tra I can trailblaze, I can get out some case examples, I can show some ideas, but to do everything, it, 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 no, I can't do everything, I can't, sorry. I can only trailblaze, I can make people think. I can try and redirect the focus of the spotlight of modern science, and that's my main objective. And I aim, one of the part of aims of wanting to help people like yourselves is that it will create a community, it will create a movement that pushes for awareness of these issues. I genuinely want to help people. Um, you know, I've, I've signed up for that Hippocratic Oath, but I also want to get a focus on researching these areas. And this is what you want. I was going to gain, gain. We will we'll gain this by getting modern medicine to think about it, by raising awareness of it. That's how it happens. Anyway, I'll post this. It's fairly long. They'll clearly, I hope, it answers some of the uh, questions you've asked. Um, do look at some of the other videos. I, I'm not going to sit there and answer questions on all of these videos. I mean, people keep saying to me, oh, you, you, why aren't you getting back? I, I am not. 
sorry, if anyone out there who understands this stuff can answer some of these people who are answering these questions, please do so. But I, before I, I, I work enough, um, that is, yep, uh, my partner phoning me saying, when am I home? Because it is past time. I, 10, 12 hour days are normal for me. Um, and I've got a young family, so I need to prioritize my time. Okay, listen, thank you all very much indeed.